Good morning, pedestrians. This is McGarren, just here in my backyard orchard, looking at this pomegranate. It is September 30th, and this is the wonderful pomegranate that I have. Some of these are just looking nice and red. Um, things are looking really nice. I mean, some of these are gargantuan. Look at that. So there's my hand, and there's the pomegranate. This thing is huge, larger than a softball. So good, can't wait to eat them. So they're almost ripe. Uh, we had a couple that split open. They were a little bit too early. Um, not very sweet, very, very tart. But you know, some people like tart. But this isn't the reason why I'm showing this video. Right now, this is just the pomegranate showing the progress and be able to have some of those. The other pomegranate that is right here that died due to the freeze is bouncing back. Some of the limbs did not make it. You can see right here, death, death and carnage everywhere. There's dead parts that are down in here too. So not very good. I will uh, trim them up, prune them down, but I do have new growth that has come up. This whole thing right here, the six feet high, that grew all this year. Awesome, phenomenal. And then I do have a couple of pomegranates. This is the Utah Sweet. They are almost ready, but for some reason my pomegranates tend to come a little bit late. But this is the real reason. I mean, look at that thing. This thing, oh, 12 feet tall about, and it's loaded with jujubes. Look at this thing. I mean, there's so many jujubes, thousands. It's phenomenal, I love it. Um, here on this side, which is the facing the inside of the orchard, it is almost ready. If they're really green like this, I don't like them this green. They are kind of flavorless. So not much flavor, but when they start getting brown spots, which I will look for one that is kind of browning a little bit more. Can't seem to find one. Now, there are some brown spots. Let me get in here. On some of these, if you look, you can see these little brown spots that are coming on that. That's actually due to like wind damage and hitting other jujubes and parts of the tree. So not quite ripe. Now, this that is a lighter brown spot, if it could focus, there we go. This, that is a sign that it's starting to ripen. And I like eating them when they are almost fully brown. This one is sugarcane jujube, and it is looking pretty good. Look at all of this fruit, it's crazy. And if you look at this cluster over there in the very center, how it's brown and starting to wrinkle, and that is, that means that it is starting to turn into a date. And I don't really like the date side. I mean, but look at this cluster. It's so full of fruit. It's just killing itself. So I'm going to eat this though and see how it tastes. Very small, smaller than a cherry. Yeah, that had some nice flavor to it. Woo, baby, loving it. Here's the Shane C. Jujube. Look at this guy tree, this thing. Beautiful. I'll zoom in here. So these are um, the size of a very small apple, like almost a ping pong ball. There we go. Ping pong ball size. Here's one that is ready. Do you see how it's getting wrinkly on one side, but then it's green on the other? Um, before it gets too wrinkly, I'm just going to pick it off. Here's another one. You can see that animals are starting to eat it on the brown side. They don't eat the green side because, I mean, gosh, who eats the green side? These things. So um, if the animals are eating it, that's good enough for me to be able to eat. And these are a little brownish, so they're getting really close to being ripe. And if I go down to the bottom here, there is another one, and here are a couple more. So size difference between this Shane C. Jujube and the sugar cane. The sugar cane has tons, but they're really, really small. 
This year, I think they're smaller than last year's, maybe because there's so many. But um, I'm gonna really prune this thing down because it's 12 feet tall. I can't reach some of those. So I'm gonna prune it down to maintain the size. Same thing with the Shane C Jujube. It is seven feet tall. I planted it this spring. Man, it's so good. Mulberries. Oh, in terms of the update for the mulberries, I planted these, posted the video. I'll put a link there. I was afraid that this was gonna die, but look at all that new growth. Here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Look at all that new growth. Bang, bang. Yes, so yes, it did have some parts that died. It's totally fine. Um, mulberries are really resilient trees. This one, this one made it. And then if I go over to this one, it also made it. Look at that. And currently watering with the drip system. I let this guy go for about an hour and it soaks the ground pretty good. Gives about maybe five gallons of watering, something like that, 10. But um, all this new growth, that's a good sign. That means that it's growing and it's establishing itself. This is the world's best mulberry. I'm going to graft a couple of different mulberries on that and a couple of different mulberries on this one too in the spring when I should be grafting. Look at this tree. This is almost eight feet tall, but this is the Aprium. Good growth, flavor delight Aprium. Right next to it, this is the smallest. It is the cotton candy Aprium but it is more full. So I'm thinking that this was planted on some type of dwarf rootstock because it should be about that size. I have read some things that people say that cotton candy aprium doesn't grow as big as the other ones. Maybe it's just because of the rootstock. And look at these pluaries, man. They are taller, they are taller than six feet. Phenomenal. I'm excited, gonna have some fruit next year, if weather permits, if we get enough freezing temperatures. Here's the Spice Z Neck to Plum. And some of the pawpaws. This pawpaw is coming back, that 110 degree weather that we had for a while there, really set these guys back. But now I'm just watering every other day. They're growing good. We're still at 90 to 95 degrees a day, which is totally fine. But here we go. And I have my weather station locally so that I can know what the temperatures are, wind speed, all that to determine how much more I need to water is the muscadine. Getting trained to go across. The other muscadine almost reaching the wire. And then the third muscadine is about a foot from reaching the wire. So look at that, so close. Just reach, buddy. Reach, reach. All right, 